Okay, so hi, my name is Portia Jackson Preston. I am a professor, and my research focuses on self care. And I had an idea this morning that we really needed to have a conversation that gave parents an opportunity to discuss coronavirus and what your concerns are, and also how you can care for your children during this time. So this is an open Zoom call. As people join us, we'll be happy to have them come into the room. We're just going to ask that everybody mute themselves. So um, some of our people have really been on it, so just keep it in the chat and remind people if we hear a lot of noise. But let's go ahead and get started. I want to introduce our main guest. So why don't you tell us about yourself? All right. Um, so hi, everyone. Um, I'm Dr. Jody Arnold, and I've been doing um, some Q&As recently um, just in response to everything that's happening with COVID-19. Um, and I've been um, kind of like presenting myself as your friendly neighborhood epidemiologist. Um, so yes, yeah, so I'm excited to talk about it. Um, you know, people have lots of questions. And um, with the de declaration of the national emergency last week, uh, a lot of us are trying to figure out like what to do with our kids because a lot of states um, have fully or partially closed schools. So um, Portia and I are like, yeah, we should totally talk about this. People, people want to have a discussion about this. Absolutely. And so to give you an idea about myself, I am not a mom. So I knew I needed to partner with Dodie to do this. Um, I come to this from the perspective of I just want to um, really help promote everyone's self care. And I know that the people that I know who are um, parents and caregivers, there's just a lot of anxiety. And if you aren't able to take care of your kids, and you're not really truly able to take care of yourself. Um, that usually is how people uh, address that. So I will be um, looking at some notes. We've been getting questions all day from friends who are parents, and we have a few answers, but we also have a lot more questions ourselves. Um, this is very informal. Neither one of us is here in our capacity as experts, but as public health professionals, um, we spend way too much time thinking about these things, and some things we won't discuss because we're thinking a week or two down the line, and we don't want to scare people. We don't know if we're going to be right or wrong. So. Um, <laughs> We're just here to discuss what we know, and we hope that we can channel our energy into a productive um, direction that will help to empower others. So let's see. Um, Dodi and I have been friends for eight years. We talk about every single day, and we're always coming up with ideas that we never um, <laughs> that we take off. And today, this is the first time where we just went, yes, we have to do this idea right now. And so um, as you guys may know, Dodi's been doing a lot of Q&As on coronavirus as an epidemiologist. Um, and I had an opportunity earlier today to interview someone who is a mom and an urgent care doctor and primary care physician. So I actually just uploaded her video on my YouTube station a moment ago. Um, if you type in Portia Jackson Preston, you will get the information. Um, and she's going to actually speak to what you need to know about coronavirus as a parent. She's going to talk about some tips that you need to know to take care of your kids. She does a great job of discussing social distancing and some of the um, other things that we'll go into details with about tonight, but not to the same extent. She also talks about flattening the curve and how she's taking care of herself as a healthcare professional to try not to spread it to her family. So um, the last thing I want to say is that this is a very quickly evolving situation. So even by the end of tonight, some of the things that we discussed may be outdated. This is not medical advice. This is not therapeutic advice. Um, we share our perspectives and the ones of people that we've been in communication with. Your decision should be informed by your own reality. We both have limitations and privileges that are unique to our own lives. So please take everything we say with a grain of salt and feel free to disagree with us. So I think that gets everything out of the way. Um, one thing I want to bring up just to discuss reality, there's going to be times where Dodie and I talk quietly. We actually had to delay the start of the show until everyone in our lives had pretty much gotten situated for the day. Her kid needed to go to sleep. So um, yep. <laughs> reality, you sneak into a private, private area and you just try to get it done. Um, this is also our time to relax and we're tired. So we have promised ourselves that we're not going to try to be overly serious for our own sanity. Um, Again, our main goal is just to make sure that you know that you're not alone. So if you have questions while we're doing this, go ahead and pop them in the Q&A. We'll be honest about when we don't know the answer. We have a lot of content to get through, so we may not get to questions to the end, but we still want you to be able to do that. Um, if anyone's watching this at a future date, we may be chunking this into smaller bites because this might be a pretty long video. But I'm gonna try to start by throwing out some topics and getting Dodie's perspectives. Um, we'll also share what we've learned throughout the day 
touching base with parents as we prepped for the show. Um, and I just want to say a huge thank you to all of our friends, colleagues, and relatives who answer our texts all day today. <laughs> us, um, when, when he asked them questions about how they were dealing with coronavirus and what questions they had. Um, so thank you guys so much. So topic number one is something that's on everybody's mind. I want to start with coronavirus and social distancing. So Dodie, first of all, I know you have other Q&As people can watch, but can you give us a basic idea of how coronavirus is different from cold or flu? Yes. Um, so one of the things that's really important for us to recognize is that it is more contagious than the flu. So like, let that sink in. You know, we all get kind of antsy this time of year about it being flu season. It is more contagious than that. Um, so the typical way that um, uh, COVID-19 or the coronavirus is transmitted is that people will cough or sneeze and you have like these little droplets um, and they kind of land everywhere if you don't cover your mouth on your surfaces. If you cover your mouth, it's on your hand and everything you touch from there. If you cough in your elbow, it's on your elbow and your clothing. So if you're hugging people, it's just everywhere, right? Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So like that's, you know, pretty much how it transmits. And where social distancing comes in is that you want to be six feet or more away from the person, from other people. Um, and I'll relax that a little bit generally and say other people who aren't in your household because obviously when you're home you're going to be like in close quarters you're going to be touching all that other stuff and especially if you have a small kid like they're going to be on you um but yeah so in public places six feet or more um <clears throat> excuse me um and so i also want to address kind of like some conflicting information that's been coming through um, I've seen a lot of um, people kind of promote alternate greetings. And so they're like, oh, we can do an elbow bump. No, that's six feet. You're too close. <laughs> like, you have to be closer than six feet to do that. Or people are like, yeah, fist bump. We're going to do that. We're going to be cool. Uh, no, you are touching. That's too close. Okay. Um, so it's really hard. Like, we're really, you know, people are just very social by nature. Um, so that's the thing to really kind of remember. Keep your space. Okay, that's a great answer. So that was for the parents. Now I would like to to explain social distancing to a five-year-old. <laughs> to a five-year-old. So, um, so five-year-olds would probably like this. So I have to kind of preface this with um, my kid when he was five was, um, I want to say, a little different because he was my five-year-old and I'm an epidemiologist. So like I tell him random stuff that like amazes me that he retains it. So for example, we had Mardi Gras break recently. His first day back, he totally forgot that it was show and tell day. So instead he talked about the coronavirus. So just, you know, that's the kind of kid we're talking about. Um, but I remember when he was younger, we actually watched the episode of um, Sid the Science Kid together. Um, and I double checked in preparation for this. Um, it's still on uh, YouTube. You can watch the whole episode or a portion, but it's an episode about Sid getting, um, hey Kyla, you made it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's an episode about him getting a flu shot. And they, you know, they call it influenza. And I think, I think his grandma was a nurse or something. But anyway, it's like very small kid appropriate, but they use the correct terms and they talk about different things. Um, so for kids, virus, bacteria, that's all kind of weird to them. And like, honestly, it's like some adults are still struggling with it. So I usually just say like germs, like we all have germs and we kind of, this is really important that we keep our germs to ourselves. And so we don't want to pass it to our friends. So that's kind of how like I explain it to younger kids. Perfect. So and it's still now, hard. It's the still last hard. challenge is now explain social distancing to a teenager Ooh. who's been in the house for three weeks. So I do not have an experience of having a teenager. <laughs> and I don't know. I would probably be like, let's go watch some uh, epidemiology videos on YouTube and talk about this. But yeah, I would just kind of give them the, expo you know, there's actually, uh, you could Google it like sneeze photo. It's super gross. You see a picture of this guy sneezing and there's just stuff going everywhere. So I think just having that kind of visualization that like this comes out, 
where does it land? Mm-hmm. Um, and actually, like, I'm kind of thinking on the fly, but um, for a younger kid, this is going to be messy, so I don't know if you really want to do this, but, like, if you took a bottle of, um, uh, not a bottle, but a container of powder and squeezed it really quickly, and it goes everywhere and lands everywhere, I think that's a good visual that small kids might get. Perfect. Now, um, I just saw something come through in the chat that is in our notes. So we're definitely going to talk about that. I want to ask you about, you know, I've been getting messages from people all day long. They're talking about the idea that this might be spreading from people who aren't even symptomatic. So I think if I was talking to um, a teenager who says, you know, my friends aren't sick, everything is fine. I would remind them, you know, if we are out and we're young or we're highly mobile, we could be spreading this and we could be overburdening the health care system by getting other people sick. Yeah. And we don't want to do that. So I think it's really important to talk to them and say, it's not just about avoiding somebody who's coughing or sneezing. It's about understanding that we could look fine and still be spreading it. And that's why we're maintaining our distance. No, that's really, really important. And like, I value this conversation because Caleb has not asked me that specific question. I'm sure it's coming. It's going to come. But just kind of like thinking through it as you were talking, um, we've had the pleasure of getting the flu twice in the last two, you know, in the last two years. And I would try to make it relevant to him and an experience that he's had. Um, so I think, and like every time he's gotten the flu, it's hit like super hard, super quick. And I have talked to him about like latency periods and things like that. And so latency is like a period when you have something like you could have the virus, but for just to use like a more common term, like it's dormant. So it's not doing anything. You're not sneezing. You don't feel ill. You're there, but you're still, um, the term we use is shedding. So Mm -hmm. like if you sneeze, you're shedding it, you're spreading it. Um, in the meantime and so you know I try to like make it relevant like oh remember when you had the flu and we were at the trampoline park and you jumped all day we probably gave other kids the flu unfortunately right. um, you know and you didn't know you were sick until the next day right so, so no this is perfect um, I want to go ahead and speed up to the question that was mm-hmm. asked in the chat I think it's really important so um when we are talking about spreading the disease to others, um, we're thinking particularly about people who might be vulnerable. So we're talking about older relatives, those with chronic illnesses, um, mm-hmm. even you know kids with asthma. And so we're, with younger kids, you know they may be frustrated because they can't go to a play date, they can't go to a birthday yeah. party. Older kids might be frustrated because they can't go out with their friends. Mm-hmm. And so how do we deal with, and let's start with the younger kids since that's what you have. How do you yeah. deal with the disappointment um, days and weeks and months from now when all these things that are just normal routine for kids' lives they can't do? How do you deal with the tantrums? What do you say? And yeah. it's okay if you don't have the answer. I just want to honor Yeah. That. So I, I will be doing this on the fly like a lot of people. <laughs> so I'm happy to share like my strategies and techniques. So it has been, we're on day three. Mm-hmm. So I, um, I took Caleb out of school on Thursday. Um, yeah, I was just like, really feeling uncomfortable. I was hoping the school would do it. And I was like, uh, you're not going to school. Um, and it had Friday off anyway. So I was like, I bet by next week school will be closed anyway. So what difference does it make if you miss an extra day? So it's been three days and I get asked like four times a day, when can I see my friend Tyler? When can we go here? And I just say like, no, remember we have the coronavirus and he'll be like, oh yeah, that's right. Um, so in my opinion, he's kind of young. Like when I was seven, I wasn't calling friends on the phone. Um, you know, obviously like we didn't have webcams and things like that, but, um, he's a really social kid. I'm going to have to arrange something. Um, it might be like a 10 minute call every day or 20 minutes to call whoever he wants. Um, you know, cause as parents, we text and stuff, but we never like let the kids get on the phone and talk. But I really think just to help his mental health and not feel isolated, mm-hmm. excuse me, I'm going to have to let him do that. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it, that exactly, Stacey. She was mentioning um, pen pals. That mm-hmm. would be really cool, too. And I mean, that could even be worked into, you know, because kids are going to be home <laughs> and we're going to have to teach. So, like, that's mm-hmm. a creative writing activity. Mm-hmm. Um, so just trying to be more creative. One of the other things is trying to make sure that I spend more time with him 
Mm -hmm. um, cause sometimes parenting, you're just trying to keep them alive and get ready for work and school the next day, mm -hmm. but actually like spend time with each other. So like I dug out some of my old board games out on the patio yesterday, um, you know, mail and Amazon still work. So I ordered some new games. Um, so just trying to like make sure we're spending time doing stuff and making sure I am trying to tap into his interests. So we've had an unusually large number of conversations about Sonic the Hedgehog and <laughs> I forget what, what exactly we were talking about. I think I said he was an alien and he said he was like an intergalactic something. I was like, you mean an alien? So we're just having like philosophical conversations about things wherever he wants to talk about. Cause I know those are things he would talk about with his friends. So, and I think a good thing to um, bring up as we move forward is there's not answers to a lot of this. And I, I just want people yeah. to not feel stuck and to feel like you're somehow not doing something right as a parent, as a caregiver, because you can't, you know, help your child feel better in certain situations. Yeah. Like this is natural. And more than anything, I just want to empower people to like reach out to each other and create this dialogue. Cause I think we're all going to have to be pretty creative to yeah. um, help each other get through this. Um, mm -hmm. So Kay has a good question. Um, well, first of all, Kay had a good tip. She was talking about using Facebook Messenger for kids. Um, they can video chat through there and parents have control as far as who they can be connected to. So that's nice. one option. Um, right. Stacy mentioned that um, kids can have arts and crafts um, or science activities via Zoom. So they can still be at home. They can yeah. still be, you know, social distance, but the yeah. moms can, like organize something where they're interacting. I think that's a fantastic idea. Um, awesome. So one more question is, is what are your thoughts about leaving the windows open? Have you thought about that? Anything? Oh, like, um, because you're in Louisiana, so like the house or the car, like, sorry, I'm like computer windows. Okay, awesome. Um, so I am totally in favor of that because, oh my god, we're gonna go nuts. So <laughs> we like to spend a lot of time outdoors. We are going to spend as much time outdoors as we possibly can. Oh, and so can it transmit through the air easily? No. And I know that's a little bit confusing, um, but to explain it um, maybe in a different way is that, you know, that image of like when a person sneezes, all that, all those droplets fly out into the air, but they land. Mm -hmm. They land on a surface. They mm -hmm. land, you know, on your clothing and someone's, they land someplace. They don't just kind of surface. float out. Right. Yeah, exactly. They're going to go to some surface. And so, uh, we're not going to go too much into detail with that because the video that I did earlier with the physician, she speaks to that. And awesome. we, we wanted to squeeze that in because we're, we're very clear we're not giving medical advice, but she does talk a little bit about surfaces and what we want to be mindful of there. Yeah. Uh, awesome. So I, I saw a specific question about how long it can last on a surface. Again, I'm not going to speak to that um, with certain yeah. fear, but that's something that I think is addressed in the video, unless you okay. have a certain response, Dodie. Yeah, so we definitely know a few days. Um, not exactly sure how many days specifically because it'll depend on the kind of surface. If it's something that's plastic and it'll evaporate really quickly versus something that's porous and paper like cardboard. Um, but some folks are saying up to nine. Um, but at least one to three. So it's, so it's just like a range. Not to scare people, but we think about cleaning um, different things as we take them from outside and public back into our house. And that's yes. another thing that um, Dr. Reed had get to in her video. Okay, so I am going to bring you back because we have so much ground um, that we skipped yeah, over. Yeah, and we didn't really have like a time limit. And like now that we're doing this and we're getting questions, I feel good. So like we can just go until we're like, ugh. Good night. So yeah, I think people are going to drop like flies and <laughs> eventually <laughs> talking. But um, let's. I'm going to probably just go all over the place. But let's just do a little yeah. thing here. So one thing that people are. Kyla says she's on the left. <laughs> okay. So um, <laughs> we'll take a restroom break eventually. Um, so a lot of parents have been talking about hygiene practices with their kids, and as I've been talking to my friends, they're saying these are conversations that we've been having all the time, especially with toddlers. So they're telling them. Mm -hmm. You're going to wash your hands for 20 seconds, but it has to be a real 20 seconds. Don't lie. Yes. And so uh, <laughs> I'm going to do something a little funny because we need to laugh. We deserve to. It's been a long day. Um, <laughs> I don't know if you've heard about this website called washyourlyrics.com, but it's actually a meme creator. <laughs> so I would like to know if anybody can give me a... Um, song idea and it just needs to be something that doesn't have profanity in it um 
put it in the chat and if I can sing it, <laughs> it will lead us and I will show you the meme generator and we'll do it together. So why do you chat me an idea of a song? This brave woman is like, mm -mm, I'm not singing. <laughs> <laughs> I have one if no one does, but let's see what comes in. My Sharona. <laughs> Everyone wants to sing it, like feel free. I did a, I did a great version today. Nice. Um, yeah, so I just need the song and the artist. So I got All You Need Is Love by The Beatles. Um, I had Baby Shark loaded and ready to go. So if you guys, I see, I know you're like, I'm not hear that. you don't understand what I've been through. <laughs> guys, I'm willing to do Beyonce. It's just for demonstration. So just give me an idea and we will go with it. So let's see. I'll probably, ooh, Love on Top. Yes, let's do this. Okay. So right. I'm going to go ahead and get my screen ready. Let's see which browser was I using for this. I'll do a new one. Um, okay, this is going to be hilarious. So wash your lyrics. All right, and I'm going to go ahead and share just safari okay so you guys should be able to see this uh window now and so i'm gonna go ahead and put on love on top by beyonce and let's see are we using soap or gel dodie oh i didn't even realize uh, so okay. gel's kind of weird to me okay all right so here's our poster um I'll just go ahead and make my browser larger so you guys can hopefully see this. Okay, so hmm. there we go. Can you see it okay now? Yeah, it's right. a little bit. Yep. It's little. Okay, so it says, so you see like the little demonstrations, right? So I have to demonstrate with my hands. So it goes, bring the beat in, honey, honey, I can see the stars all the way from here. Can't you see the glow on the window pane? I can feel the sun whenever you're near. Every time you touch me, I just melt away. Everybody asks me why I'm smiling now from ear to ear. They say love hurts, but I know it's going to take a little work. Nothing's perfect, but it's worth it after fighting through my tears. And finally, you put me first. Baby, it's you. You're the one I love. There we go. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> so that's my demonstration. You guys can take whatever song you like and um, you can watch with your kids and it can be a fun little activity. Yeah, because happy birthday got old pretty quick. Happy birthday got old. <laughs> I was really not trying to do that. So I, I thought this was hilarious um, and I'm so happy for whoever created that. Okay, so let's get back to the show notes. <laughs> Somebody's husband <laughs> said, what are you coming along to? <laughs> okay, so now let's talk about, um, we want to acknowledge coming into this conversation that there's a lot of parents and caregivers, um, grandparents, whoever's caring for the child that might be facing a lot of different situations. So we have some people who are home with their children. Um, they may be stay-at-home moms and they may be used to their child going to school. They're now at home. They might be used to homeschooling their child and now they're taking they have to keep their home, their student at, a child at home more because they would have been interacting with other kids. Um, you may have people who were working their jobs, but they were asked to work remotely. And one thing Dodi mentioned is this is different from when your kid is staying home from school because they're sick, because maybe mm -hmm. they were working all day and now you have to do something with them all day. Um, there may be people who are needing to find alternate arrangements for their kids because they need to work outside of the home. And for example, the doctor that I interviewed earlier, um, she's a healthcare professional. She's got to go in and help care for people. So finding care for her kids. And then lastly, we also have people who were working up until this started or were looking for work. And now they're facing a really drastic situation because they're trying to figure out how I'm going to keep a roof over my, my child's head as I deal with mm -hmm. this. So before we get into this conversation, I just want to recognize that there's no singular experience and there's probably a lot more that I didn't think of. 
So everyone is trying to figure out now, how do I work with my job? Um, how do I take care of my kid during this time? So a um, couple of notes I wanna bring into this. Um, let's see. We were discussing earlier, if you are in a position where you are working at your job, um, mm -hmm. finding out if there's any policies um, related to paid administrative leave or alternate work schedules, um, being able to um, have that conversation with your manager. I know even at my institution, it varies based on what your position is, whether or not you're expected mm -hmm. to come in. Um, and there's some leniency for us if people have, um, for example, a health issue that would make them vulnerable, they can have a conversation. So I think the first Thing to recognize is that every workplace is different. So um, knowing that we can't possibly get to all of them, I think it'd be great to have Dodi speak to your personal situation and how you're navigating this as someone who is now working remotely. Um, you can speak to how you're going to try to manage to get your work done and take care of your child and help him get his work done. And you can talk yes. about the decision you've made regarding his schooling. And then I would say if there's one or two questions in the chat, we'll just try to address those situations. But I feel like we really need to um, acknowledge and make space for the fact that this is a much broader conversation, an evolving conversation. Okay, yeah. your floor. All right, so what am I doing? <laughs> so it's, yeah, it's been really interesting to try to like juggle this and figure all of this out. Um, so some of you may know, um, but I am a single parent. Um, I live with my parents, so we're a multi-generational household, which, yay, because there's someone to, like, make sure he's not dying or, like, feed him a snack while I'm busy. But then there are, like, two other adults to coordinate, and, like, we're all working from home now. So we also, we've been having a conversation, like, put your headphones on when you're having a conference call. No one wants to hear the whole conversation. <laughs> so we're trying to, like, manage, um, manage a lot of things. And then, um, you know, now Caleb's going to be home all day. And, you know, I have a lot of concerns about him missing a month of school. So he's in public school, um, great school. I love his teacher. He loves being in school. Um, my concern is, so in the state of Louisiana, we have a one month, um, school closure, it's supposed to open April 13th. Um, I don't know the future. I don't know what's going to happen, but I have a concern that it'll be extended beyond that. And I don't want them to fall too far back in school. So I'm really treating this like, okay, I'm homeschooling you now. Um, so I, sort of anticipation of everything that's happened on Friday and to come. Um, I spent a lot of time kind of like debating with friends about what my options were for education. So there's an online public charter school in Louisiana and I went ahead and submitted an application to him for him there to see if he could join mid-year. Um, and then I also submitted an application to homeschool in Louisiana. So I know like all states have different rules, regulations, um, but like it's pretty straightforward, pretty easy. It literally took me an hour to get homeschooling approved. Uh, so I have my official letter, um, but now school's closed, so I couldn't withdraw them anyway, but I feel like, you know, nothing lost. So my game plan is that if it draws on entirely like months, um, that I can just withdraw him and, you know, check he finished the second grade and then like re-enroll him in third grade or whatever. Um, but I just want to have some flexibility. Um, for those who may be considering like an online schooling option versus homeschooling, I'll tell you how I made that decision. Um, I have so much to juggle and I hated the thought of him having webinars that a teacher put effort into, assignments that he had to do, and then us three adults had to coordinate to make sure he got that work done. Mm -hmm. um, so homeschooling seemed easier because I set his curriculum. I set what he's doing. Um, you know, as a single parent, like we talk a lot, know each other pretty well. Um, not that others don't, but like, you know, we just, we spend an awful lot of time together. <laughs> and so I felt like I could tailor the curriculum to his interests um, better than, um, just having someone say here we're gonna learn whatever 
Um, so redirect me if I'm getting off course, but no, that no, was sort of... Perfect. That was perfect. Yeah, um, but that was so how I made that decision. Being that I talk to you every day, um, I'm gonna ask <laughs> questions. Um, so explain to everyone how you're setting up your space and how you anticipate, or talk about how you set up your space for the two of you to both get work done, and then talk through your concerns about being able to get your work done with your girl <laughs> stuff. Yes, so space. So we really have been, so we've spent the last two weeks, it felt like foraging for food, like honestly, like foraging for supplies <laughs> and making <laughs> sure <laughs> we were stopped with, you know, everybody order meds, like all that stuff. And um, since Thursday, Friday, we've kind of turned inward to the house and like, okay, we need to clean up, we need to get rid of this stuff. We need to, um, like, we've all collectively like put junk on like, the dining room table and the, and the table in the kitchen and so thinking about we want to keep surfaces clean as much as possible we've cleared out those items so that we can wipe it down with disinfectant and know that that's safe versus having like a lot of little objects and items to clean um but so we've kind of coordinated with each other, with each other and so we have like different spaces so actually like right now I am broadcasting to you from a bedroom. So I have um, a little area with a desk, a laptop, you know, like everything you need in the modern era. Um, so this is like my convenient place to, um, to work. Uh, it's away from like the den. So like he's watching TV and stuff. It's really not a disruption. Um, my dad's working from home and he prefers to um, work in the dining room or, um, and there's like a little study he has. Um, he hasn't been using it much lately, but we're gonna switch. And Caleb and I are gonna start taking the dining room table during the day because he needs assistance when he's doing his schoolwork. Um, so I can't say, okay, I'm in my room. <laughs> you go in your room. Like that's just not realistic. Um, so we're kind of reallocating the space. Um, my mom's a homemaker. Um, you know, she's quite busy, like managing the household. Her mother's in a nursing home. And so, you know, just seeing like everything that happened in Seattle with the nursing home being the first set of patients and, you know, just having a lot of losses there, you know, we're trying to make sure she has everything she needs um, and all of that. So we're just trying to share the space as best we can. Thank you for that. So I'm going to share a couple of perspectives. Um, one was came in earlier today. So I had a friend who said she's going to turn her kitchen area into a schoolroom. Um, they're doing extra cleaning right now. And um, she's just trying to look at this as a positive way to like have more time together as a family. Um, yeah. Obviously, I know that that's going to get harder and harder as time <laughs> goes on, but yeah. that's you know her, her look. Um, Stacy, do you mind if I share what you shared? Just want to make sure. I, okay, good. Just want to make sure. <laughs> because I'm lucky at my job, they're offering remote work and alternate hours. Um, starting March 16th, my son's school will be doing online classes. He got in the car on Friday with all sorts of information on coronavirus and was excited about computer school. Yay, so, Liam! <laughs> I think we take the silver lining wherever we can get it. <laughs> yeah. And like, I can't lie, like, part of me, like, you know, portion of this, I wanted to work fully remote for a long time. <laughs> So I feel like, okay, this is really, it's like, I got my wish <laughs> all of this in a different way, but yeah, in a different way than I expected, but like, this is happening and so, we'll see how it goes. Um, were there any questions from anybody who's in the chat about this topic mm -hmm. before we move on? I just want to give a second for that. And then um, because my job here is facilitator, I'm going to take our uh, conversation in a light yeah. and positive, funny way for a minute. Um, <sighs> make us all laugh for a moment. I have an interruption. Oh, go ahead. Before you transition, there's one really important thing that mm -hmm. I wanted to mention. I don't know if we'll get to it later, but I feel like it fits really nice here. Um, so just my other concern is about like how I'm going to get my work done. because like, That's what I, I was asking about. Work. Yes, please. Yeah. So um, I don't know how this is going to work, but this is going to be my first stab at it. So, you know, like I work eight hours a day. I don't think it's realistically realistic or possible to expect myself to do like a straight eight like I would in the office because right. I have to feed him so that I have to fix lunch we're gonna have to have snacks we're gonna, he's gonna have to go play because if not he's gonna go insane and be unbearable right <laughs> me too um so we're gonna have to build in some breaks so one of the things that I've been looking at is um and definitely work around your strengths like when your quiet hours are 
um, your power hours. I am considering waking up super early in the morning. I'm already up four or five o'clock in the morning usually, but I'm thinking of, I know that's what happens. So I'm thinking about working from three to seven. That gives me four hours before he's up to get things done. And so the way I envision allocating my time there is like that high functioning work. Like if I'm writing papers, if I'm editing, stuff that I'm just doing for myself, but like I need kind of like peace and quiet and no interruptions to get done, that's when I'm going to do it. And I um, think, go ahead. Oh, so like that's when I'm intending to do it. And then when Caleb gets up, you know, just kind of like maintain his schedule, we'll make breakfast. I'll let him like relax a little. And then I'm looking to do like another two hour chunk where he can sit next to me at the dining room table and do work that's mostly independent for him. Um, so like reading or math or something that he can do. He'll ask some questions, but it's not going to be like a whole long explanation really involved. Mm -hmm. um, and that's usually a period when um, I have meetings that I would be leading or hosting. So like I'm serving as the facilitator, I'm driving the agenda, like I have a lot of talking and things to do. <laughs> and then, you know, break for lunch, try, beg him to maybe take a nap. <laughs> and then in the afternoon, just before dinner, do another two hour chunk. So I have um, some meetings, you know, because I have a lot of recurring meetings. So I have some meetings in the afternoon where I'm not the lead, the host, the facilitator, but I just have to give, um, you know, substantial contribution and participate in whatever we're discussing. And so I feel like at that point, it's a little, it's a little bit easier. Um, my parents are home, but they all, you know, my dad has his own conference calls and stuff. So we'll probably default to having like some sort of daily check-in and but I'm trying to budget my time where I'm responsible for him all of the time and I know that's not realistic right so we have to talk and like when are you available because right. you get to go hang out with mama or papa so what we're going to do guys right now is we're going to take a cognitive break for a moment we've processed a lot of information I'm going to stand up I invite you to do the same. Um, Dodie just gave us a lot of information. And one of the things, Thanks. I'm going to stretch a little bit. You got to over there. Um, maybe don't stretch into the camera like I did there, but yeah. That's all right. Um, <laughs> it's not reasonable for anybody to work eight hours continuously, even in our workplaces, and they probably won't. And so one of the dangers, this is just a little self-care tip that we run when we're, um, beginning to do this is we're thinking, oh, I'm going to work from home like a work, a robot. And then we'll end up being on the computer all the time. And you're going to end up developing tendonitis and everything yes. else. <laughs> and so um, I was having an ergonomic assessment last week and they were talking about if you're working every hour, I want you standing for five or 10 minutes. And so we've been on this call for 38 minutes. And I think we started um, around eight o'clock. And so just taking a moment, like I said, position your camera right so you're not yep. flashing whoever you're having a meeting with but just standing up for a moment, stretching around, doing some lunges, releasing your hips and opening them. If you're drinking water, that's gonna make you have to use the restroom, but don't expect yourself to be superhuman. Um, have conversations with your workplace about what their expectations are regarding your core hours. But remember, everyone goes to the restroom, everyone takes a break and eats. There's no one that's figured out how to just work continuously through an eight hour shift without using a restroom, I don't know. So try to be reasonable with yourself. Try to be gentle with yourself. Um, one of the big things I wanted to do this is I realized I'm going to have a lot of students who are parents. And I didn't know for sure if the school shutdowns were going to, I didn't know when they were going to happen, but I felt like they would. So if my students were going to be online, I thought I can no longer anticipate that they all are going to be available at the time that I have class. And so if they have a kid they have to take care of, can I make it so their camera can be off so that they don't have to worry about their kid being in the background? you know, whatever it is they need. Um, someone, okay, so there's a couple things that were mentioned in the chat. So one for Kyla I want to get to. Um, Dodie and I made a pact that we wouldn't scare people on this call, and she already did. She slipped through. Um, Sorry. She said something about being at home for months. So guys, the first thing I want to tell you is um, we don't know for sure. Absolutely. Sure. And so everyone is really just trying to, I think, be gentle about this at first. We need to acclimate to what's going on. Yeah. Um, but it's been a long time since we've had a pandemic. So 
Yeah. Uh, none of us were alive. <laughs> you yeah. know, um, we think back yeah. to SARS, it didn't happen like this, never reached that status. So I think the first thing that I say from a self-care perspective is yeah. you have to take this one day at a time. Mm-hmm. Hi. Yeah. I see Stacy's little guys joined us. Hey, Liam. About coronavirus. I tell them that you were very mm-hmm. excited about computer school. This is kind of how it might go. This is how exactly. It might go. Yes. So hey, Liam. Yes, you're welcome, Kyla. It's a wake-up call for all of us, and um, this is how I've been coping. Oh, it's okay. You want to say hi, buddy? It's okay. Go ahead. Hi, people. Hi. My class has 26 people and two teachers, so how would that work? I don't know, but I bet that they're figuring it out right now. (laughs) Right. Yeah. It could be. It could be. Yeah. It, it looks like it starts to look like the Brady Bunch. I'm told. Like it's just like a lot of people. Yeah. It's you know it's a whole new world, bud, and we're all in it together. So we're gonna figure it out. You're part of the future. So um, <laughs> yes, Kyla, it is something to prepare for. Um, I, I spent a lot of time before all this started to unfold thinking about what was gonna happen, and now that we're in it, I'm just really trying to take it one day at a time. So. Um, I get up in the morning, I'm trying to get myself to meditate instead of checking my phone. I I Mm. try to think about, you know, what do I know for sure? Um, Mm. I'm a spiritual person, so I do spend time thinking about my family in a light of like, you know, praying for people that I'm not necessarily able to check on every day. I call people. Um, Dodie and I talk every day. I check on her. Um, <laughs> she doesn't text me by like 4 p.m. I'm like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> so whoever your people are, I, I think it's yeah. important that your presence doesn't go unnoticed in this world, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, all these spaces that you use to gather in, you want to try to create as much normalcy as possible. So if you can connect with people over video chat. But I think, you know, the major reason for why we're having this conversation tonight is I really deeply believe people have to come together and talk through this. I think a mm-hmm. lot of emotions start to come up when we're just sitting around in our own thoughts. So um, yeah. that's my answer is like, we, we just got to just take this one day at a time. All right. Um, so <laughs> actually, yes, Kyla brought up something like, do we foresee a more strict lockdown? So I'm going to try really hard to not get speculative here, but I want to share something that another friend who is a global health scientist um, shared with me. So please just keep in mind, this is someone's opinion. So she said, um, We have a social responsibility to not get sick at all because then we're a carrier to someone else who's vulnerable. Um, We don't want to end up in a total lockdown. um, So we have to do our part and stay in. So that's what her answer was. And that's what I'm going to share with you. It's like the best thing we can do is to try to do our part. And that's to try to reduce our exposure and not be. And I I want to kind of elaborate on the idea of staying in. I think we, we need that distance so we don't want to be in public places but something that I am personally okay with so again it's not advice you have to make your own decision but personally um we like to spend a lot of time outdoors so I'm personally fine with like going to our state park because there's not playground equipment there you know they're not the surfaces that I'm concerned about and it's very easy to like go hiking and have distance between the other people Um, so that's, you know, another thing to think about that in doesn't mean like in your little home and never ever outside. So, you know, there can be some creative things that you can do. And uh, things could change in the future, but that's where we are today. So I say everything you can enjoy today, just savor it. Yes. Um, (laughs) Another thing is use YouTube videos to work out at home. I have so many channels that I really enjoy. Um, Superhero Fitness TV. Um, She does some great like hip hop dance. I love their clothes. I didn't even realize they had video. (laughs) It makes sense, but yeah, Yeah. totally. So um, she's amazing. It's Kiara Lachey and she has amazing fitness videos. Um, Yoga with Adrian is wonderful for yoga. Um, there's other people that I just really have been following for a long time and they have so many different like modifications. Um, boy, you guys are coming in with some good questions. I didn't know where to get the two ply tissue. I, um, said that I think hoarding your toilet paper will stop once people are down to one ply. Um, I feel like toilet paper is something that people feel like can do control, you know, yeah. if, if they feel like they can't control the situation. One thing they can do is like 
get all the toilet paper possible. So I'm gonna go back. Um, there were a few other things and I'll get back to our call notes. Um, so somebody else who teaches like me said that they're expected to interact with their students and reply to students who send in their work, but they've said you have to take care of yourselves and your kids first. And I just, I really adore that information. That's exactly why I'm doing this here. I know that my students are not gonna be able to learn if um, they can't take care of what's directly in front of them. So if I truly care about them as their teacher, the first thing I'm telling them is like, you've got to take yeah. care you, you know, this, this is real. This is the real life for everybody. Mm -hmm. So um, thank you so much for sharing that. Let's see. Um, someone else said their, their family went crazy with the pantry. Um, I can tell you, I went to the grocery store today and I got to the granola on the second shelf and somebody had brought out all of my favorite granola. And I know, right? And so I like settled for the other granola. I looked up and I saw how far the carts went with all the food and all the people. I threw that granola on back on the shelf and said, I'm out. Like, I can't <laughs> believe it. So it's, it's an interesting time. Um, we also tried the online ordering today and um, oh. my husband placed an order for like six different items and they let him place the order. And what came, I'm not kidding you, it was like two little eight ounce bottles of orange juice. No. <laughs> None of the other stuff came. So I'm not trying oh to scare anyone. But, um, <laughs> I'm not, you know, I, I don't want to tell people to hoard. I've been telling my family, um, if you can try to make sure you have enough food for two weeks. And it, it's not the time for, you know, maybe a couple of weeks ago, I was out there buying like wild caught skip jack tuna. <laughs> Now it's like, no, you know, food, food right? <laughs> if you're diabetic, what is diabetic friendly food? But um, this yeah. is not the time to be like super gourmet. Um, let's see. What in the world? Oh my God. Somebody said, if you can't get two ply, you can use a squeeze bottle of the day. Like after a yes. man, yes. Because you're right. But I feel like we're going to need to cry through that. Because, you know, I, I'm sorry. I immediately thought about um, interest. Let's just say interesting times I've had traveling. And I'm just like, as long as you got so, we got options. This is true. We do some <laughs> pretty pretty things. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um, bidets have come up so many times today. I can't tell you how many conversations I've had with people about bidets. All right. So oh, I have to, I have to say something. Yes, so okay. I, <laughs> I went to Japan and just have fallen in love with bidets. And when I got back, my dad was like, oh, we can put one in your bathroom. And for whatever reason, I was, I didn't realize that there's a separate water line that comes to the bidet. Uh, I thought it was like the water from the tank, yeah. which is like super gross. Like, I don't know about y'all, but like, I hate yeah. looking at the tank. And so I was like, mm -mm, no, 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 thank you. No, uh, that's not for me. And so now I'm like, hey, can we get a bidet? <laughs> now that I you've cleared up that misconception. And I saw this heated toilet and I was like, I think I understand now, but yes. we're not there yet. And we're so no. off topic. Okay, I'm now getting links for bidets. So there you go. <laughs> Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Um, so one thing that we should probably pause and talk about, this came up all day long in the chat. So I have friends who have small families and they don't have the option of childcare and they need to work. Mm. And so they're asking where, what should I do? You know, should I pull my kid out of daycare or not? And so somebody here was saying it's so, they're finding it odd that places are finally, are suddenly offering all day daycare is this not getting in the way of social distancing? So I think this is a very fine line for us because obviously a lot of us feel the need to work and provide for our families. So I feel like it's not gonna work to say you can't, you know, yeah. leave your child somewhere. And I, I think this is where, when we have these conversations, I always remind people like, it's not about our titles in this conversation. We are people sharing perspectives. And so if there's a perspective that doesn't work for your family, I know that everybody make their own decisions. I do think the social distancing is really important right now. And so it's, it's easy to say, okay, we're going to send them to so-and-so's house, but that person has an, an older relative who's vulnerable, right? Or, mm -hmm. oh, the kids usually all play together and they're all like handing the iPad back and forth. Mm -hmm. this, this is something that I don't feel qualified to answer, Dodie. I don't know if you feel qualified. Yeah. Answer. Like we really, we really don't know. And I promised you guys at the beginning of this call, if yeah. there were things that were still perplexing us, we would acknowledge that. I don't think we have a viable solution yet that is going to work for every situation. So I'm yeah. sure that you guys are critically thinking about this. Yeah. So that's a very, what I very there. one. Mm -hmm. um, boy, we have so much. Um, I had somebody talking earlier about a school system. They were concerned. Oh, this is actually one of your friends, Dodie, when you sent me your screenshots earlier. 
Yeah. They were um, concerned that their school system isn't closing. Yes. And they're like, how, how do we even advocate for that to happen? Should we talk about the lack of social distancing? What are your thoughts? Yeah. So, so how do I get them to close? So I know I have been bugging my kids principal <laughs> in school system for a while. And they said that they were monitoring absences, whatever that means. Um, so I kind of suspect that um, other schools would be doing something similar. So I think if like parents just stop bringing their kids, that they'll eventually say like, hey, like the attendance, like we should do something. Um, I think good old fashioned phone calls still work. If you have a PTA meeting, like go call the principal, email the principals, like show up, keep six feet, but you know, like express your concerns and just be like very vocal. Um, yeah, unfortunately, like some people are receptive um, I do think it's probably more effective at the level of your school district or whatever the administrative um, organization looks like, because I know like one elementary school is not going to close when the rest are open. Like they usually operate as a whole system. Um, yeah. So I think that that's probably where your biggest influence or like where you want to concentrate at. Is. And I just want to acknowledge that, again, we're not advocating for one side over the other. I do understand the benefit of normalcy, um, but yeah. this was a particular concern and question that someone had. So I mentioned earlier that I was going to try to make it a little bit light because we've been talking about heavy stuff for a while. So um, Dodie has been enthralling me all week with the stories of her son and his reactions to coronavirus. So I want to tell you this is for a reason. We want to get to um, how do we have developmentally appropriate um, conversations with our kids about coronavirus. And when I brought this up with Dodie, she was like, I'm not sure that I have the right answer, but I can definitely tell you what I'm doing wrong. So <laughs> Dodi, I'm going to let you go ahead and start sharing those stories. Yeah. What so has your son said this week? This is a really quick pulse check. It's like, oh, I messed this up really badly. So um, I listen to NPR and stuff and like he hears like certain conversations. So he's like aware-ish of what's going on. Um, but he had gotten to the point where he was hearing about like the social distancing and um and was very concerned that I was still going to work and so he's like oh I don't want you to go to New Orleans when are you gonna when are you gonna work from home and I'm like well the office is still open <laughs> and so he was like well you know I'm just gonna keep my distance from you I can't hug you I'm not gonna kiss you and I need you to stay away from my mom and papa like you're off limits and I was like Oh, I'm like, well, he's paying attention. He understands what I've been saying. Um, so eventually, so I actually um, started uh, working remotely before my company made the policy because I just, I just wasn't comfortable continuing to go in knowing that we were having, um, you know, uh, people in the community were starting to get it. And so, um, yeah, so I did that, talked it over um, with my employer and stuff and it was good. So I was home and then my dad's office made, went mandatory remote. And so he's like, everybody's home but me. And he was like, well, I don't, I don't want to go to school. I want to go home. And I was like, well, no, it's, it's fine. Like you should go spend time with your friends. And then he was just like, but I don't, I don't want to die. I don't want to get you guys sick. And then he just started crying and he was like I've only had seven years I'm only seven years I don't want to die and it's funny now but it's just like I have done something terribly wrong in my messaging that he's like in tears that he's gonna die and get the rest of us sick um so you know I kind of it took it took a while to calm him down he hasn't had another outburst like that but I'm trying to remember like this is a lot for him to process and, you know, I can tell him, like, the stats on children and that, like, they're getting it, but, like, they're not at risk of dying like the older people are. And, but, like, I can say that, and he heard those words, but he still feels like he himself is very much at risk. Um, so, so, did yeah. you tell the story, the, the funniest one? Oh, I don't even know at this point. He says a lot of things. Which okay, <laughs> so what about the one about the funeral? Oh God. So this is in the same conversation, right? This is still mid meltdown. And he was just like, well, that's not fair. I can't go to school to get sick. And he's like, well, you know what? If I, if I get sick and I die, you can't come to my funeral. <laughs> and so I was like, 
I, I was I was at my best mom moment. And so I was like, you'll be dead. You won't know if I come to your funeral. He's like, no, I'll make sure. I was like, oh, all right. So, yeah. Um, and we share all that not to like. Don't do that. <laughs> yeah, we're not sharing that to laugh at her kid, obviously. But yeah. um, Caleb is wonderful. I've had the pleasure of like speaking with him very frequently. And um <laughs> you know, obviously we care tremendously for him and we, we are watching him with curiosity and just going, okay, like, how is he experiencing this and how does he need to be yeah. supported? And so as I've been having conversations with people, everyone's saying, you know, I want to talk to my child about this in developmentally appropriate ways. I want to make sure they take it seriously, but I don't want to scare them. So um, there's a few tips that people have shared with me. Um, I have the pleasure of having friends that are um, physicians and social workers and everything in between, licensed therapists. So this is some of their advice. Um, let's see. Actually, I'm going to start with um, Stacy's because it's great. So Stacy, thank you for this. She says that um, her son got in the car saying that his age group isn't really at risk, mostly just old, really old people or young people with heart problems. He seemed to understand that we have a job to protect the people who are at risk. And I think that's awesome. wonderful. It underlines something that a friend sent me today earlier, um, saying that instead of um, panicking, let's talk to them about focusing on what we can control. Here's what we can do to help to protect people. And so we can talk about frequently washing our hands and why we're social distancing. And we can really couch this as an act of compassion towards yeah. other people. Um, we want to address their fears about the virus. We want to make sure that, and I told Dodi this earlier in the week when um, Caleb was really struggling. I said, you know, just validate what he says, like tell him it's okay to be concerned and, and listen to those concerns because he's experiencing this. And I told her, but at the same time, his brain development is different. So the way that we experience yeah. things, he doesn't have the brain capacity to you know, really process it the way that we do. So he's experiencing something very real, but in his own way. So people talked about um, what are safe options for them to be able to engage with their friends and their peers, because we, like we said, we don't want them to completely go silent. So um, the suggestions we had earlier about monitoring the Facebook Messenger so that they can video chat. And, you know, I love the idea about the Zoom play dates. Um, mm -hmm. We're using Zoom tonight. This is a professional account, so we can go longer. Usually I think they're about 40 minutes for the free account. So just keep that in mind um let's see i had oh so here's another one um what are some fun things that we can do with the kids to help them stay connected um someone talked about the importance of routine without rigidity so earlier we were talking mm -hmm. about self-care yeah. tips for us um now's a great time to share a couple of tips that i have insight timer is a um, meditation app that has, I think, at least 20,000 free meditations, and they have a whole stream of meditations for kids. So you can do all these amazing uh, meditations with them if they're feeling anxiety or if they need something in the morning or in the evening, it's called Insight Timer. And that could just be a new ritual that you guys have. Um, there's a Facebook page that Kyla has created called Professor yeah. Mom and Dad, and she's sharing some ideas there as well. So I love that. And that um, is an excellent page. Yeah, it's an excellent group. Thank you so thank much. Thank you. So please check that out. And um, Dodie, if you get that to me, we'll put it in the show notes when we um, okay. put everything together. Um, someone else talked about being gentle with ourselves as parents in terms of how much we can expect any of us to achieve during these times. We all have a job to do, but um, being mindful that sometimes our kids are going to need us. And obviously I'm speaking when I say are, I'm speaking to all of you. Um, another great tip that someone gave us, I'll put it in the show notes. There are museums that give virtual tours all around the world. So there's 12 museums around the world that are offering virtual, virtual tours right now. And so that'd be a great way to kind of experience travel and maybe read about these different countries with your children. Um, I think so much of this is a positive learning opportunity. We have a chance to talk to children about um, why it's important not to practice xenophobia um, mm -hmm. and understanding that viruses don't have a color or an origin and how much we really need to unite together as a world to fight this. So there's, there's so many lessons here. Um, Dodie, you mentioned something about an opera. Yeah, I'd seen that. I think it was a New York Metropolitan Opera is going to be doing nightly live streams. So we will be going to the opera. So we're going <laughs> to learn a whole, like I said, it's a whole new world. Okay, so we're actually starting to get through some of this. I'm really excited. Um, let's see. Okay. Um, 
oh, coming up with things you can do as a family, like um, working online. Um, so the kids are working on their schooling online um, and you're working on your work, but when you guys aren't doing that, um, having movie nights as a family, reading together, um, playing games, and having real conversations about, you know, what you're doing to um, practice gratitude and appreciation mm -hmm. and what you're doing to be safe. But I think um, we're kind of back to, you know, oh my gosh, we're out for summer, what are we doing at summer camp? Except they're very much in school. So it's about, yeah. right. <laughs> Um, let's see. I think we have the link. It's the Metropolitan Opera. So we're going to put that link in there. Um, there were a couple of questions earlier about, um, medical information. And like I said, I don't want to, um, yeah. provide any advice here, but I will tell you, if you go back to the physician, um, video that's up on my YouTube page, she'll talk a little bit about it. There was one question that wasn't answered in there. Um, people wanted to know about, um, whether or not it was safe to give kids um, Tylenol or ibuprofen because they'd heard um, conflicting information. And so the physician clarified that only aspirin should be avoided in children with a viral illness, but Tylenol or acetaminophen and ibuprofen, Motrin, Advil, she felt were okay. Again, I'm not giving medical advice. I'm just sharing um, mm. the answer to a question that was given earlier today. I've seen a lot of people talk about um, using supplements, just trying to help their children keep their immune system strong. So again, I'm gonna let everyone defer to your own mommy wisdom on this. <laughs> Dodi, do you have anything to add there? No, I think it's um, spot on. Mm -hmm. I definitely want to talk about asthma. Yes, um, you did. This is a great time for that, please. Yeah, so um, I had a question um, in my Facebook about kids with asthma and about them being um, at risk. And so, yes, there is an added risk for folks with asthma. Um, and I'll kind of break it down like very briefly. So some of the other lung diseases um, where people are at risk are actually diseases that have to do with how much oxygen is going from the lungs into the blood to the heart and the rest of the body. So that's not asthma's issue. Asthma is not about oxygen um, at all. It's about the airways being very narrow. Um, and so that just presents like a different, um, a different issue. Um, so you could be having shortness of breath. And I think given the symptoms that we've seen about COVID versus asthma, you know, we know shortness of breath is, you know, one of the symptoms. So I would urge everyone to kind of talk to their doctors about, you know, really being and being very thoughtful of themselves of like where your breathing is. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. And if you yourself have asthma, like I do, or you have a kid with asthma, you've probably all seen a peak flow. They come in like different formats. Um, if you have concerns, like, I would probably, this is what I plan to do, just map like where I am normally. And just like, if I'm having some issues, just kind of see like, oh, is it a little bit or is it concerning? Um, but most important, know how to reach your pulmonologist or your primary care, whoever you see that's managing your asthma. Um, because as people, and Portia has the other interview that she'll um, integrate with us, as we're trying to reduce the number of people who get sick and the number of people needing medical care, we don't really want to be going to doctors for things that we can manage at home um, or via phone call. So there's a lot of different options. Um, so some doctors have um, like a, or doctors or healthcare systems have 24 hour phone lines. You can just call and ask a question without having to go into the office. Um, you may or may not have an electronic portal set up where you can email your doctor. Um, there are a lot of hospitals and now also insurance companies that have telehealth visits. So you could pay like a copay and get on your phone and kind of express your concerns. So just want everyone to feel like if they have an issue, they know who to go to yeah. um, and just, yeah, just have a plan. And I'll say um, some tips I've been passing on to my family along with health stuff. If you have an ongoing health condition um, for which you're taking medication, um, if you're getting close to the end of your supplies, you might want to call in and ask for at least a month renewal and see what they're willing to give you. Um, it, the rules are a little different right now. So you might experience that they're willing to refill something a bit sooner. Um, 
also, I know I have a check-in with my doctor next week, but I'm relatively healthy. So he's going to look at my labs and then he's going to see if he needs to see me in person just because he's a specialist. And I know there's some people that critically need his care right now. Um, so just, you know, using your wisdom. But I think one thing that's really important to say is if you feel like you or your child have symptoms and you're wondering whether or not it's coronavirus, um, they actually don't want you to go to the doctor's office and just show yeah. up for an appointment. You really need to call ahead of time because they need to make preparations for you and let you know what they want you to do. And that's so we can protect the rest of the population. So we're not going to get too much into that, but I, I want to say that. Um, so I think we've actually done a really good job of getting through all this information. There's a couple of things that I want to talk about, again, in regards to self-care. I've gotten some good messaging on parents. Um, one thing is, like I said, the same thing I talked about with the meditations for the kids applies for you. Um, doing something to start your day and to end your day that allows you to take care of yourself as a person. And I'm talking sometimes, maybe all you have is three minutes in the restroom, play a one minute meditation, okay? <laughs> Do what you can. Um, I got some really wonderful texts sent to me today. Um, these are some tips that are going around. One person said it's healthy to get away from your um, or I will say step away from your children and have some me time to make you a better parent. It's a necessity. Also do what makes you happy as a parent. You will be a valuable parent to your children. Love yourself and show love to your children. It's important to know that they are loved. So I thought that was worth sharing. The other thing is I talked about grocery delivery earlier. There are a lot of different numbers and um, emails. I'm sorry, websites that are going out right now with information on how to get grocery delivery. So I'll be happy to share those as well. Um, now there's a few things that I wanted to come back to on the self-care tip. Oh, so another app that I've been raving about to people is called Youper. So I want to say, first of all, I am a huge fan of therapy. Um, if you have access to it, I know a lot of therapists right now are trying to figure out ways to do more tele appointments for their own safety as well as their patients. So if that's an option for you, I do highly recommend that. Um, what is the name of, Kyla, let me know what you need the name of. Um, so I was just talking about therapy. So the app for meditation is called uh, Insight Timer, Insight Timer. And oh, I think it was the uh, mental health care. It was the last. That's thing. what I'm about to talk about. Okay. Yeah, she knows because I've been telling her about it. Okay. The ther okay, so this is not um, therapy, but it is based on cognitive behavioral therapy. Um, it's something that researchers came up with is kind of like artificial intelligence, where they lead you through cognitive behavioral therapies. And it's called Insight Timer. And I have probably recommended this to every person I've talked to in the past year. Um, I think that some of the options are not free, so I'm not really sure what the pay scheme is on it. Um, but what it does is you open it whenever, and I always tell people it's who you talk to when you don't want to talk to anybody. So you're, you're feeling your mood, you go somewhere in the corner, you're just like, ah, this is how I feel. And the first thing it does is it lets you track your mood. It lets you track the factors that are related to your mood. And so it wants to learn from you over time. When you say that you are sad, when you say that you're happy, when you say that you're frustrated, what are the factors that are related to that? So it tries to learn about you. Um, it gives you a chance to kind of describe the situation and then it comes up with different activities. So it might have you think about, are there any thought traps? Sometimes I engage in black and white thinking like, it must be this or it has to be that. And it tries to help me, you know, kind of, reason through that. Um, it will talk to me about mindfulness activities. It might try to get me to do a breathing exercise. Sometimes it um, tells me that I should practice gratitude and think about what I'm grateful for. And I've been doing that so much more during this crisis. It's like every day that I wake up and I feel like, oh, wow, I'm grateful for my health and my strength and my family and my job and my purpose. Like I start to feel better. So I've noticed it really helps me a lot. I think it's important to use it when you're feeling good as well as when you're feeling bad. So there's nothing novel about it in terms of, you know, it is cognitive behavioral therapy, but I think it's a wonderful way for people to be able to engage with it wherever they are. So highly recommend that. Um, and there's other apps that I can probably put in the notes um, on my website, actually. So it's PortiaJackson.com. Um, there's one page on there. It's the resource page. So it's PortiaJackson.com backslash resources. I have probably every free self-care um, resource I could think of. Yeah. And there's one that I'm really thrilled to tell you guys about. Um, there's a website for developing a free self-care plan. And I think actually this is probably a good time to use my screen to bring these up for you guys. So let me just get a new window. 
and I will put my website in here. There we go. And share. Okay. So let's see if I can make this a little bit smaller. Okay. So here's my website. And the first thing I'll tell you is down at the bottom, I actually have a TED talk on the importance of self care. And it's about 12 minutes. So I definitely recommend checking that out. Um, and not because I worked for 10 months on it. I think it's actually good. Um, <laughs> so here's my resource page. And as I do presentations, um, as a professor on self-care, I just try to get as much information as I can. So there's some resources on um, stress and children, but the main one, well, I'll show you the whole page and then I'll kind of go back up to the top. So there's all kinds of links to um, mindfulness meditations that you can look at. Um, there's actually a course on mindfulness-based stress reduction that is absolutely free and delivered over the internet. Um, this is an organization that I'm involved with, Grow Trek, that um, encourages people, um, particularly Black women, to engage in self-care by walking regularly. So there's a lot of great things to check out here. But the one that I really want to tell you about is the self-care starter kit that's available through the University of Buffalo School of Social Work. So I really use this extensively in my work every time I talk to people about self-care. Um, so you start here, there's an actual like overview of what self-care is and why it's so important in fostering our resilience. And then there's a um, self-care plan. So it literally leads you through thinking about how do you cope when you are stressed? What do you do that's good for your health and bad for your health? Um, then you go through a self-care assessment. It's about three pages and you just tick off all the different activities that you do right now, as well as things you might like to do in the future. Then you actually develop your own self-care plan. So you think about all these different areas of my life, like what am I currently doing? What would I like to do? And then this last one right here is very handy. This is your emergency self-care plan. So we all create a self-care plan based on what we would ideally do. And then life hits and we're like, oh my God, I'm not doing any of it. So the emergency self-care plan um, really speaks to what you're going to do when you're in a crisis, who you're going to talk to, what are you going to say or not say, who are you not going to call because it would make things harder on you. <laughs> what do you do to make yourself feel good? So that is something that I very much recommend. I actually just did this with my students. Um, and I offered it as an as assignment, so they could do it or not do it, and every single one of my students did it. And so now that we're going through this, I'm like, okay, guys, pull up that emergency self-care plan because we need to talk about putting this into effect. So those are some of the things that I have available. I'll probably, um, I'm really in a space right now where I'm walking back and forth between taking care of myself as I need to, and then doing things like this because it keeps me from just being too focused on the news and also um, developing the resources that I need to for my students. So I may not be able to get everything out on a, you know, quick turnaround, but I really do want to continue to create self-care resources that will help people on a daily basis. Um, for exercise, I wanted to mention, I am, I don't know where we'll go for now. Gyms are open and every, I've seen that there's fewer people there. They're really trying to do a good job of spreading out. Everyone's, you know, running all over the place with the rubbing, the, the alcohol trying to disinfect. So for now, that is an option. Um, if you prefer to work out at home, circuit training in your home using a YouTube video. Um, there's so many different, I saw a coronavirus workout that somebody sent me. <laughs> it was like a circuit, kind of like a, a wad for CrossFit that you could do at home. Um, so I will put some of these links in the show notes so that you can really just have a quick place to go think about doing self-care. So Dodie, I think we honestly made it through all of our topics. I can't believe it. We Is did. there something else that you wanted to address before we open it up? Oh, actually, yeah. Alicia had a question yeah. about um, it, that I am not at all equipped to address, okay. but I just want to acknowledge it. Yeah. It was about... Um, gargling with peroxide to help yes I did see that question um, yeah so I just want to acknowledge that and that's something that I don't I don't know about yeah so the context for this was um they were saying that they heard it was recommended that peroxide could help um to kind of kill the virus and this is, is that something that you can gargle as a safe against gargle it and we are not going to address that but we do want to acknowledge it 
Yeah. yeah. Okay. And yeah, so like literally, I think we covered every question that was asked. So yeah, I feel good about amazing. that. Amazing. Yeah. I feel really good because we're actually under the time that we um, assumed. So what we're going to do now is um, if you have a quiet background, feel free to unmute yourself. And if you want to answer a question of us, you can either put it in the chat or you can talk with us. Just keep in mind, we're still recording. So if you want me to, if you want to say something for after we record, just let us know in the chat and we'll make sure we do that first. And I want to thank you guys. I know there's some people that called us by phone that are listening in and we're just so happy to have you guys. And we hope that this has been a benefit to you. <laughs> oh, that's my cousin. <laughs> Love you too. <laughs> Yes, Kyla, there will be a link to this. So what we're going to do is um, once we hit stop record, I'm going to save it and upload it to my YouTube page and then um, it will have a link. And you guys will be welcome to share it with whoever you like. Um, is there any question that someone would like shared publicly? Otherwise, I'll go ahead and stop recording and we can all relax and kind of talk informally. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and stop recording. Like I said, you guys don't have to hang up, but I just wanna say thank you so much to Dr. Darnie Arnold. Thank you for your expertise, Dodie. Thank you Absolutely. for your openness. I think people really need to hear people who are in, relaxed and relatable and informative. Someone who knows their stuff, but they're also willing to be real and not just give out you know, perfect answers because those don't exist right now. So um, I want to say thank you to each of you for jumping on board with this. Um, this came up today. <laughs> you all are friends of Dodie and you just pop right on in here. So I'm really grateful to you. And thank you to my friends as well. So I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording. And I um, thank everyone who's watching this online. Thanks. Great. Let's see.